Hello, welcome to this video about statistics with Archiword and the package and architecture. In this video, we're going to see how to uh, compute descriptive statistics with Archiword. Well, first, open the, the practices booklet and go to chapter uh, 3, that is about sampling statistics. And here, go to exercise 1. In exercise 1, we have a sample of 25 families and we are measuring the number of children. Instead of creating a, a new data set and typing this data, from now on, we are going to load the data sets from the package architecture because the package architecture contains most of the data sets in these practices. First of all, you have to load the architecture package and you have to go to settings, manage our packages and plugins. Look for architecture package, it is here, load and OK. Okay, after this, if you go to the workspace, you will see in other environments that here you have all the packages that are loaded for this session. And here you have the package architecture. And if you click here, you can see all the data set that contain. Well, in this case, I think the name for the data set is children. Here we are. And um, in order to use this dataset, I have to make a copy of this dataset to my workspace. And for that, you have to right click and select copy to global environment. After this, you will see in my workspace, there is a copy of the dataset and you can double click and open it. As you can see, this dataset contains only one variable, that is the number of children. Let's go to part B. In part B, it asks for the arithmetic mean, the variance, and the standard deviation. In order to compute these statistics in Archiword, you have to go to Teaching, Descriptive Statistics, and Statistics. So let's go to the menu Teaching, Descriptive Statistics, and Statistics. Here, in this dialog, all we have to do is select the variable that I want to compute the statistics for. Be careful because you have to select the variable, not the data set, the whole data set. And this is a common mistake. And then go to the basic statistics tab. And here, just pick, just select the statistics that you are interested in. In this case, the arithmetic mean, the variance, and the standard deviation. OK. Then submit. And here we get the summary with these statistics. As we can see, the mean is 1.67 children. The variance is 0 0.7424 children square. And the standard deviation is 0 0.8616 children. Well, if you want to interpret the standard deviation, you have to take into account the units because I'm talking about children. And the standard deviation talks about the spread of data with respect to the mean. So. Since the range of values in this sample is from 0 children up to 4, 0 0.86 is not too big, but also not too, much, too, not too small. So I will say that the, there is a moderate spread with respect to the mean. And for that reason, the representativity of the mean is moderate. If you have doubts about how to interpret the standard deviation, uh, it's a good idea to compute the coefficient operation, because this statistics has no units. Uh, many times it's easier to interpret. In order to compute the coefficient of determination, all you have to do is go to run again, basic statistics, and just select the coefficient of ratio. Then submit. And here, as you can see, the coefficient of ratio is 0 0.489, almost 0 0.5. And that means that the relative spread with respect to the mean is moderate. Um, the representativity of the mean is also moderate. OK, let's go to part C. In part C, it asks for the quartiles, the range, the interquartile range, the third decile, and the 68th percentile. Well, let's see how to compute quartiles, deciles, and percentiles in general using uh, Archiword. 
you have to go to teaching, descriptive statistics, and statistics. So I can just run again and go to basic statistics and check this and mark the ones that I want now that are quartiles, the range, the interquartile range, and the uh, percentiles. Well, in order to compute the styles and percentiles, uh, you have to enter the uh, cumulative frequency that correspond to these quartiles. For instance, if you want the third decile, you have to type 0 0.3 because the cumulative frequency for the third decile is 0 0.3 or what is the same 30%. While for the 68th percentile, you have to type 0 0.68. Okay, and then submit. And here we get the range. Remember, the range is the difference between the maximum and the minimum. That is for children. The interquartile range is the difference between the third and the first quartiles. And the quartiles appear here. The first quartile uh, is one. Here we have 25% uh, accumulated. So that means that 25% of the families of the sample have one or less children. The second quartile is uh, two. That is the same than the median, and that means that 50% of the families have two or less children. And the third quartile eh, is the value that accumulates 75%, that is also two. And also uh, here we have the third deciles, the value that accumulates 30% of data, that is 1.2 children, and the percentile 68th, that is also two. Okay. That's all for exercise one. Now let's go to exercise two. In exercise two, we have a sample about the number of people treated in an emergency service of a hospital every day of November. Again, we are going to load this data set. And for that, I think the name for this data set is emergencies. Okay. Just right click and copy to Global M to make a copy of this data set in my workspace. And now you can double click and open it. And as you can see, this data set contains one variable that is the number of people treated in the emergency service. Well, let's go to part B. Again, it asks for the arithmetic mean, the variance and the standard deviation and the coefficient of variation, okay? Well, we can repeat the steps of the previous exercise, but this is a trick. It's a little bit faster because we have computed these statistics uh, previously. So you can run again this dialog. And here, all you have to do is replace children by the new variable that is emergencies. And that's all. You can submit and you get the mean, the variance, the standard deviation, and the coefficient variation for the new variable. Well, as you can see, the mean is 18.2 persons, the variance is 69.4 persons a square, the standard deviation is 8.3 persons, and the coefficient variation is 0 0.45. Well, if you compare the standard deviation, as you can see, this standard deviation is obviously greater than this one of the previous exercise. So, if you just compare the standard deviation, you can think that uh, the, this sample, the sample of people treated in the emergency service, has more spread with respect to the mean because the standard deviation is greater. But remember that the standard deviation has units and is not the same to compare children with persons treated in an emergency service. So be careful with this. Whenever you want to compare the spread of two different samples, it's better to use the coefficient of variation because it has no units and comparing the two as you can see now the coefficient of variation for children is a little bit greater than for emergencies so that means that even if the standard deviation is greater the relative spread with respect to the mean is smaller in the second sample and um, for that reason the mean represents a little bit better in in the sample of emergencies than in the sample of children Okay, let's go to part C. 
In part C, it asks for the coefficients of skinness and kurtosis. In order to get these coefficients, all you have to do is run again. And here I'll go to basic statistics and check these statistics and check the coefficient of skinness and the coefficient of kurtosis. Both are statistics of shape. Then submit, and here we are <coughs> and here we get well the coefficient of skinness is 1.7168, that is positive, so that means that distribution is quite right skew. While the coefficient of kurtosis is 4.17 and is pretty big, it's also positive, so that means that this distribution is more peaked than a ghost bell, than a normal distribution. Since this coefficient is greater than two, I can I can conclude that this sample doesn't come from a normal population, because in order to assume that the sample comes from a normal population, both the statistics, the coefficient of skinness and the coefficient of kurtosis, must be between minus two and two, and that's not the case. Okay, we are not going to do exercise 3 because it's not interesting, so let's move on to exercise 4. In exercise 4, we have a sample with the heights of a sample of 30 students, but also we have the gender of the students. So I have two variables, and now we are going to compare the heights of these two groups. In order to get this data set, the name is heights. Height students, this one. We're going to copy to my workspace and you can open it and you will see that this data set contains two variables the height of the students and the second variable is the gender, that is a qualitative variable with two categories males and females. Okay, part B. As for the arithmetic mean, the median, the variance, the standard deviation, and quartiles. But now according to the gender. So that means that I want to split the sample into groups and compute the statistics for each group and then to compare them. Okay, well, in order to compute the statistics, remember it's the same menu than before. Go to teaching, descriptive statistics, statistics. And here select the variable high. Okay, and select basic statistics, and here select the, the arithmetic mean, the variance, sorry, the median, the variance, the standard deviation, and also the quartiles. And then submit. Well, as you can see, I get uh, a summary with the statistics for the whole sample, but how can we get the statistics, the statistics for males and females. Well, if you want to split the sample in groups and compute the statistics separately, all you have to do is run again. And here I select this box, statistics by groups. And select as grouping variable, the variable that you want to use in order to split the sample in groups. In this case is the gender. And then submit. So this way we're going to get two groups, one for males and the other one for females, with the statistics. And now we can compare the statistics of the two groups. As you can see, the mean for males is greater than for females, obvious. The same for the median. And the standard deviation is a little bit greater for males than for females. So that means that there is a little bit more of a spread in the sample of males and um, here you have the quartiles also that you can you can compare the quartiles also again if you want to compare the spread of these two samples it's better to use the coefficient of variation uh, here we have it's more or less the same but it's a little bit greater in males uh, but in both cases is very very small so that means that the mean represents very very well in this case but a little bit better in females
because the coefficient of determination is small. Well, it doesn't ask for the coefficient of uh, skewness and kurtosis, but we can compute them quickly. And we can compare also the coefficient of kurtosis and skewness. And here we have for males is positive, uh, so that means that it's a little bit right skew, this distribution, while for females is the opposite, is negative, so it's a little bit left skewed. Uh, regarding the kurtosis, the kurtosis for males is negative, it's flatter than August Bell, quite flat, and for females it's also flatter but less than for males. Anyway, in both cases, uh, we can assume that the samples come from normal populations because both the coefficient of skinness and the coefficient of kurtosis falls between minus 2 and 2 for males and for females. Well, that's all about this practice. Uh, I propose you to try these exercises that you have below. Um, and that's all. Bye.